When you're in a weak position, just living can be tough. It's the same whether you're out in the world or at home. For someone like me, weak and vulnerable, there's no such thing as a safe place. I was teased, belittled, and used as a stress reliever by everyone around me. By enduring this, I somehow justified my existence. I've waited for a miracle that seemed impossible, enduring pain and suffering. But now, I've decided to stop waiting, lift my head, and walk my own path without looking back. My name is Zoe. I'm 28 years old. For nearly a decade, I've been working in programming, mostly remotely. There's always a high demand for skilled programmers, so there's more than enough work to tire me out. I manage multiple teams and oversee operations. The person once seen as the weakest, the lowest, is now a leader. Life really is unpredictable. Since I was young, I was mocked for being gloomy and introverted. This ridicule wasn't limited to my peers. At home, it was just the same. My brother Wesley especially looked down on me and made fun of me. When he left for college after graduating high school, I felt a deep sense of relief. After finishing high school myself, I didn't pursue further education and instead retreated to my room. It was almost as if staying home was a trade-off for not continuing my studies. For years, I rarely left the room, accumulating experience and achievements. My mom and Wesley then and now have always looked down on me and ridiculed me, but my dad was different. It's hard to believe he married someone as mean as my mom. He was that kind of gentle person. In tough and sad times, I would snuggle up to my dad at the pub he ran and cry. The pub was a small establishment on the ground floor of our house, and he managed it alone. It's okay, Zoe, just hang in there. Your luck will turn around eventually, he'd say. I could tell he was trying to convince himself of the same thing. The pub wasn't thriving, often running at a deficit. This left my dad unable to stand up to my mom, who worked a corporate job. The building was rented, costing $3,000 a month in rent. Three years ago, when my work started to take off, I took over the rent payments. I'll never forget the look of surprise on my dad's face when I offered to take care of the rent. It was the first time I saw him smile like that, tearfully expressing his gratitude. To support my dad's business, I worked harder than ever. I believe it was then that I grew most as a programmer. Working became a way of repaying my dad. I was truly happy about that. Dad passed away suddenly from an illness about six months ago. The pain of his loss hasn't healed even a bit. I can still cry rivers, but I couldn't just keep crying. After Dad's death, Wesley, who had always been at odds with him, came back home. Wesley had married a few years back. His wife's name is Hannah. She's a perfect match for a mean-spirited Wesley sly, and with a sharp tongue. In the house without Dad, Wesley and his wife started acting as if they owned the place. Hey, Zoe, still cooped up in your room, messing with your computer? Creepy. Oh, that's not nice, Wesley. Poor Zoe. When Wesley and his wife start teasing me, Mom joins in, attacking me too. Mom, now retired, spends all day at home doing nothing. Every time she sees me, she clicks her tongue muttering that I should just leave. I wish you had taken Zoe with you, Dad. Every snide joke from Mom, every moment of feeling alienated at home, made me think there's no reason for me to stay here anymore. I need to leave as soon as possible. I'll live for myself, especially now that I don't have a single ally left at home. After Dad's passing, every time Wesley sees me around the house, he clicks his tongue. So does Hannah. Needless to say, so does Mom. They ignore me completely, even eating separately. Mom is actually my foster mother. My biological mother died in a traffic accident before I was old enough to remember. I call my foster mom, Mom, but it's just out of necessity. Wesley is my stepbrother. There's no blood relation between him, me, or dad. That's probably why mom and Wesley can be so cold to me. After dad's death, Wesley and his wife took over the pub. They had always been interested in the food and beverage industry. However, without any hesitation, they closed down Dad's pub. Then, in a selfish move, Wesley and his wife remodeled the place into a cafe. Wesley helps out on weekends while working his regular job. With Hannah as the manager, to cover the cafe's remodeling costs, Wesley used Dad's inheritance without consulting me. I usually keep quiet, but I got angry. That money was supposed to be for me too, right? 
How can you just use it all without asking? Don't raise your voice like that, introvert. From that moment, Wesley's malicious attacks on me got worse. They made it clear they wanted me gone, overtly treating me like an enemy. This moocher, get out now. Just looking at you makes me sick. It's like looking at a slug. Of course, Mom joined in on the momentum. Yes, get out. Moochers are a nuisance. I was utterly disgusted by their ignorance and arrogance, and so I started preparing to move out immediately, hoping they'd all go to hell. I found a nice apartment, signed the lease, and moved my belongings. I even bought myself a new computer as a moving-in gift. On the last day at home, I said to the three of them, From now on, you'll need to handle the rent yourselves. I won't be paying it. Wasn't this place owned by our parents? Wesley's stupidity never ceased to amaze me. I didn't even feel like laughing. Mom, wanting to stay on the strong end, acted like she didn't care. The rent is $3,000 a month. I hope the cafe sales can cover it. Wait, Zoe, you're paying $3,000 a month? Seeing how shocked Wesley was, I decided to enlighten them. Over the past decade, working as a programmer, I started my own company. Currently, it employs about 40 employees all skilled programmers. Leading them, I've successfully managed various projects. Paying $3,000 a month was nothing for me. I plan to expand my business further from my new apartment. This move is a great opportunity to start something new. As I finished, Wesley, with a forced smile, started clapping. I didn't know that. Impressive, Zoe. You can stay here. What? Don't leave. You can stay here just like before, right? Mom, caught off guard, nodded in surprise. Yes, Wesley's right. No need for you to leave. I think so too. Wow, Zoe, I'm impressed. Changed my mind about you. The three of them completely changed their tune, knowing the amount of rent and my financial capability made them rethink. But it was too late for anything they said. I picked up my last bag and stood up. How foolish. Just so you know, I won't be helping out. Goodbye. Despite their attempts to hold me back, I left the house. Afterward, I began a new life in my spacious apartment, working by a bright window with a cup of coffee. No one complains. When I feel like a change of scenery, I can head to a nearby cafe. Realizing my newfound freedom, I gradually changed. I started wearing clothes I liked and changed my hairstyle. I began checking out places and items that caught my interest. My team members noticed, saying my voice sounded brighter, much to their delight. Apparently, I used to have a worryingly low and somber tone during meetings. My positive changes seemed to brighten up my employees as well. Meanwhile, I kept getting calls from Wesley. I ignored them, but Mom started calling too. I could have blocked them. I have no attachment to those three, but I didn't cut ties completely, just for a bit of payback. For instance, when I felt particularly down, I'd answer Wesley's calls. Wesley tried everything to appease me and lure me back home. His flattering tone was amusing. Mom was almost the same. Please, let the past be the past, she said in a cloying voice. I listened to them, only to firmly reject them in the end. Return to my parents' home to live under the same roof with the three people I detest most in this world? Why would I willingly subject myself to such a miserable ordeal? Now the tables were completely turned. Hearing Wesley and Mom's reactions when I rebuffed them was amusing. I slowly enacted my revenge, recalling all the mean things they did to me. I learned a lot from talking to Wesley. It turns out Wesley and Hannah actually have a significant amount of debt. Most of it seems due to Wesley's gambling. He's underreported the amount to Hannah, a truly shady affair. Wesley got hooked on gambling in college. Hannah, uninterested in gambling, just loves shopping. According to Wesley, she has enough clothes, shoes, and bags to open a store. She constantly browses websites and buys whatever catches her eye. No matter how much they earn, it's never enough. A pitiful situation. And in their dire state, they continue their wasteful lifestyle. Utterly baffling. I got more details about Hannah from Mom. Despite living together, she hardly helps with the housework. She only washes her own laundry, leaving almost everything else to mom. She never cleans, cooks, or tidies up unless told to. Just imagining the tense atmosphere in my parents' home was depressing. 
Also, the cafe's business was failing, constantly in deficit. Typically, it takes a cafe six months to a year to get on track. The funds miraculously obtained through a bank loan were gone in three months. They should have prepared at least six months' worth of funds. With hardly any customers at the cafe, the home atmosphere was constantly strained. Wesley and his wife's relationship is on the brink of collapse, Mom said, but that's none of my concern. Just support Wesley, then I said coldly before hanging up. Mom kept calling, each time asking me to come back. After all their insults, now they want to pretend it never happened. The audacity. Lately, Mom's been appealing to my emotions. Appealing to my Already in her 60s, she says she's in pain all over and finds daily chores difficult. When I asked if she meant I should come back to do the housework, she hastily denied it. According to Mom, just having me, her close daughter nearby without any reservations, is comforting to her. She says it's enough if I'm just there occasionally helping out. It was clear she was after my money. Of course, I didn't believe her words or feel obligated to comply. What was truly unpleasant was her invoking memories of my dad. Dad was kind. He must be pitying me now, Zoe. You're kind like dad. You couldn't abandon your family. But bringing up dad had the opposite effect. I knew how much dad suffered because of mom, a loser running an unprofitable shop. How many times have I heard him being called that? Mom, who once scorned me, now has no choice but to flatter me. If Dad were watching, he'd surely be laughing at her. If he pies anything, it's Mom's ugliness. I later informed Wesley that Mom had been bad-mouthing Hannah extensively at my parents' home. A battle between Mom and Hannah erupted. Now Mom apparently calls Hannah a moocher. Caught between the two, Wesley seems to be in a tough spot, though it was two months later when Hannah's affair came to light. Apparently, a man had approached her while she was alone in the cafe. The cafe business wasn't doing well, and the relationship with her mother-in-law was terrible. Wesley was in a bad mood, too, feeling down for a while. She apparently gave in to the temptation. Naturally, Wesley was furious when he found out. In a sensible world, they would have calmly discussed their future. But foolish Wesley opted for a shock in the form of revenge. He, too, had an affair, both blaming each other. Wesley and his wife had a huge fight. The marital spat continued until a glass ornament thrown by Hannah hit Mom's foot. Mom ended up with a broken leg, taking months to heal, leaving her bedridden and unable to do housework. Feeling somewhat responsible, Hannah started doing the housework. But her inexperience led to inevitable mistakes. Small mistakes should be overlooked, but Mom took the opportunity to complain to Hannah. Typical harassment— criticizing her efficiency and the overly salty food. Hannah wanted to give up, but couldn't, her stress building up. Angry at Wesley for his affair and retaliation, and at herself for injuring her mother-in-law, unable to talk about divorce because of her duty to care for her injured mother-in-law, Hannah's mental state deteriorated. Wesley said she was now in a state of depression. Wesley suffered badly because of his affair for revenge. He ended up deeply resented by the partner of his affair. The partner was persistent, calling his home and workplace with harassment. As a result, Wesley had to leave his job. Unable to stay any longer, the settlement for the affair forced him into more debt. Unable to find a steady job quickly, he started working part-time. Warehouse logistics, cleaner, mover, delivery person. He's trying every job that seems feasible. Despite overworking, he says it's better than being at home. Being at home with Hannah and Mom's stairs hurts better to work outside the house. Once noisy with couple fights and mother-in-law and daughter-in-law conflicts was now eerily quiet because nobody willingly speaks to each other. Mom doesn't even want to see Wesley and Hannah's faces. Hannah doesn't want to meet her mother-in-law, and Wesley feels awkward talking to both of them. That seems to be the current state of affairs. They don't want to interact, yet they live together. It's nothing short of hellish, and I find it terrifying. Wesley, who shared all of these stories with me over the phone, asked me for money at the end of the call. I refused, of course. Lending them money would only encourage dependency, and I don't want to be involved in that. Relationships built on money disappear when the money runs out, and I wanted to cut ties there. Wesley said he would call again, so I set up his number to block. I also blocked Mom's number. I never registered Hannah's number. I don't answer calls from unknown or private numbers so no worries there. The three of them, unable to pay rent, 
eventually dispersed. Mom moved into a retirement home, and Wesley and his wife divorced. Rumor has it that the building already has a new tenant. No one knows where Wesley and Hannah went. They're probably living modestly somewhere, slowly paying off their debts. As for me, I continue to enjoy my comfortable solo life. Work is going well, and I have a good relationship with my employees. Everything is perfect, but maybe there's a new twist ahead. A colleague introduced me to a man, and I've agreed to a date. He's a young entrepreneur. His eyes sharpen when he talks about work. A charming person. Until now, I've been solely focused on my job, never dating. It seems like that part of my life is coming to an end. To an end.